My name is David Hernandez, and you're listening to As the Pokeball Turns. Welcome to As the Pokeball Turns. Our journey takes us to Oklahoma, where we meet an inspiring voice actress who has developed a Twitch community called the Fuzzbutts. Centered around being a nerd safe haven to be yourself and make friends, she's built an active community who comes together thanks to Pokemon. Not only do some of them meet for a community day or go fest, but the more worldwide group of friends meet at in-person events such as NAIC. It's the way Pokemon brings people together is what keeps her and her friends connected to the franchise. Here's her origin story into the world of Pokemon. This is Sweet Kicks 101. Today, I'm joined by a voice actor and the leader of the Fuzz Butts, Sweet Kicks 101. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for having me. I think when people think of the fuzz buzz, like, what is that, right? I know what it's about, but can you, like, give some insight <laughs> to the people who are listening to what the fuzz buzz is? Of course. So for those of you that don't know, to me and my community, a fuzz butt is a joltic. <laughs> and that name came about from a fan comic I read a very long time ago called Fun Facts About Joltic. And one of the panels said, fun fact, Joltik is 98% fuzz butt. I looked at it and went, you know what? It really is 98% fuzz butt. And it just stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, you and Joltik have been uh, partners in crime, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Ironically enough, Joltik was not number one at first. It was actually Shiny Pumpkaboo. But the more I was messing around with Joltik and, of course, the fan comic, I was like, you know what? I really like Joltik more. I'm sorry, Pumpkaboo. You're going to go as sick and banana. Oh, Pumpkaboo got demoted. This is just a smidgy. I still love it. Just a smidge. <laughs> what was it about Joltik? I know that for those who can't see, you have like a huge Joltik plushie collection. I right? do. I, as to date, have every Joltik plush sold from the Pokemon Company. <laughs> I didn't even know they sold plushies, to be honest. I thought that maybe you had to get them, like, third party or from Etsy or something like that. I mean, I do have a third party one. <laughs> Not me, but a friend of mine who goes by Cheesecake, she found a bootleg Joltik one day. <laughs> and when I say bootleg, this thing has a small head on a big honking body, and it has legs. Not little nubbies. I'm talking legs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is it like when you see that guy in the laundromat? I don't know if you ever go to one of those. And he has like a drench coat and he just shows you some burnt CDs or movies. <laughs> Best one. If you know, you know. Best $20 <laughs> I ever spent. <laughs> oh, it was only $20. It was only $20. I looked at it. I was like, yep, it's coming home. It's having a home. <laughs> okay, I might need that number to the person who sold you that one because that's actually not a bad deal. <laughs> Well, let's talk about your experience with Pokemon. So what was your first experience with the Pokemon franchise? So I would say my very, very, very first experience was back when I was probably about five, six years old. They were selling the Burger King toys of the Pokemon stuff at Burger King. I was already dabbling a little bit into the TV show. I wasn't like completely hooked. But my brother and I were playing on the playground area, and in the tube area, we came across these two boys having a Pokemon card battle with each other. And my brother and I were just fascinated by it. They just looked at us like, where do these random kids come from? I don't know. Whatever. They're not bugging us. Let's just keep going. So they had their match, and they were gathering up their stuff. One of the boys left. The other one looked at us, and he was like, well, hey, do you guys like Pokemon? And I was like, oh, yeah, I like Pokemon. Not knowing much about it. And... <laughs> And my brother's like, make it till you make it. <laughs> right? And my brother's like, well, she likes Pokemon. I do too. So he shuffles through his deck and he holds out some cards and he goes, here, you guys each pick one that you like. And I picked out a horsey and I don't remember what my brother picked out. 
As for like the video games that happened like two months later, my cousin actually was playing Pokemon Crystal and then she let me try it when she went to go take a shower and then I was just immediately hooked in. I was like, I, I gotta get on this. This is fun. With Pokemon Crystal, did you like start a new fire or you just continue to play hers? I continued to play hers, and then I think, if I'm remembering correctly, my father's mother, that she was visiting one time, and she took us to a game store, and she bought me Pokemon Crystal and a Game Boy Color. And what was about that game that kind of hooked you in? Because you said the game was, once you started playing that, you were just instantly hooked with the franchise, right? Mm -hmm. I believe she was stuck in a cave, and I was just battling Pokemon, leveling them up, etc., I think I got to Bugsy, and I fought Bugsy with the Pokemon that she had, and I was like, yeah, this is fun. She got mad at me because she wanted to beat Bugsy herself, so oops. <laughs> you stole her thunder. Just a smidge. Well, I, hey, I mean, I left her Whitney, so. Oh, my God, that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I beat Bugsy for you, but I'll leave you Whitney. I'll leave you Whitney. <laughs> Laura, little Laura didn't know the hellfire that was Whitney in her mill tank until she got the game herself. Oh, my God. Oops. I'm sorry, cousin. Oh, man. So after that, did you stick with Pokemon throughout? Yeah, pretty much. I did peter off, I want to say, around Gen 4. And then I came right back into it, guns a blazing on Gen 5. What was it about Gen 5 that brought you back? The plot. <laughs> I'm someone that is very plot driven. So if your game has a really good story behind it, you're going to immediately drag me in and have me completely hooked. Now with Gen 5, the story I believe was Team Plasma. Mm -hmm. And they were pointing at the issue that's always been the back shadow of Pokemon, right? Mm -hmm. To where is it ethical to actually use Pokemon in battles? Yeah, Getsus was basically going from town to town preaching about how, oh, well, we think we're helping Pokemon, but we're actually harming them by keeping them in Pokeballs. They should all be let free. Spoiler alert, I'm lying to you. I want to manipulate you to giving up your Pokemon so Plasma and I can take them all for ourselves and rule the world. <laughs> Although N was very innocent about because he really believed in that, too. Mm -hmm. N basically got played like a fiddle. What do you think of N? Because he was a very interesting character, in my opinion. I really do like N. And then they definitely helped mold his character a little bit more in Black 2 and White 2 whenever that came out. And actually speaking, even in Pokemon Masters EX, they take what was already given in Black and White, Black 2 and White 2, and they even polished him further. Really? How so? So, a little backstory. This is set on an artificial island called Passio, ruled by Prince Lear, who really sucks at Pokemon battles and is trying to get better. So, you kind of end up being rivals for a bit, and he owns a Hoopa. And Hoopa will just start being mischievous and pulling in trainers from different parts of the world onto Passio. Which is sort of their explanation as to like, oh, hey, here's Kanto characters meeting Unova characters for the first time and so forth. So right. when N arrived onto the island, I believe actually Getsis came before N did. So Getsis was already running around causing a muck through everything. And they actually had it to where Giovanni and Getsis teamed up to steal N's Zekrom, which they almost succeeded, but they were able to get Zekrom free and defeat them both. And N tried to have a full-blown conversation with his father, basically going back to the points, I don't understand why you're not wanting to talk to me anymore. I am your son. I even just saved you back there because Giovanni pulled a fast one on Getsus and tried to steal his Kiram. And he goes, well, I didn't ask to be saved, for one thing. You're still a freak. I don't consider you my son at all. So Ooh. do me a favor and leave me alone. And he leaves. And it was probably the most gut-wrenching thing that I had ever seen. <laughs> Especially in, like, it's, it's a mobile game, too. So I'm like, where is this coming from? Oh, my God, my heart. Poor N. <laughs> I know, that's so heartbreaking. It reminds me of, I don't know if you ever saw it, but back in Hard Gold Soul Silver, where Giovanni could yep. sound silver, and they had the flashback, it's kind of an interesting parallel to see Giovanni and Getsis on the same team. Although, I think it would have been perfect if they had included silver with N. Oh, they did. Oh, they did. They did. At the very beginning of that story, I think N and Silver were on a team against Brendan and his father, Norman. 
And they got beat by Brennan and Norman, which I find hilarious because Norman is the worst unit in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a team of slacking? He has a, he has a slacking, and it's just very outdated. Uh, it's just not good. <laughs> mm. And so the the two of them were trying to figure out how to work as a team and so they could, like, sync up better and et cetera. And then that was when Nate and Hilbert found N. And they're like, hey, we're so glad we found you, but we've got an issue because your dad is here and we can't find him. So that's where that all started. Maybe there's a reason why the Pokemon franchise doesn't include the fathers, because all the fathers in the Pokemon franchise are psychopath <laughs> outside of Norman. So Yeah, Norman seems to be the only quote-unquote good dad, despite the fact that he prioritizes his gym leader duty over his family. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. I mean, <laughs> you have to go find him in his home gym in order to really see if he's there or not. Yeah, and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire didn't paint him any better when... I think it's right after you beat the main story and there's like a cutscene with your mom on the phone with Norman going, Hey, are you coming home for the firework festival thingy? And he's like, Oh, drat. Sorry, dear. I forgot. I have to do my job. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a train. And I'm like... And, and she's okay with it, but I'm like, girly, I would not be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he hasn't been home in like a couple weeks now. Like, Yeah, and, and some people will even joke like, oh, he prioritizes Wally more than he prioritizes May slash Brendan. <laughs> Youch. You're not wrong, though, but ow. <laughs> what is it about the Pokemon Masters game that you enjoy? Because like, you're one of the few people I've met who've actually played it. Mm-hmm. What is it about the game that you like to play? It's very different than the normal style of Pokemon that a lot of us are used to. You've got your characters are always with, like, one Pokemon. You can always have, like, alternate units. So, like, for example, going back to N for a minute, N is, like, a electric unit with Zekrom, and they're a striker, so they're, like, an attacking pair. He has another unit, which is called his Cigna suit, where he's with Black Kiram. And he's a tech unit, but he's an ice unit at that point. You're only limited to four moves, too. And you're a team of three. So it's like a team of three keeping it balanced to take on, like, bad guys or champion challenges where you face, like, the Elite Four. But you're essentially just battling bad guys. There's challenge modes... Where you, like I said, fight the Elite Four, or you can fight a different sync pair unit to, like, level up items. Or you can even, they introduced this a couple years ago, the Trainer Lodge, where you can invite a trainer there and basically, like, go on a friend date with them. Ooh, spicy. (laughs) Not too spicy, because some of those sync pairs are kids. (laughs) We'll leave that to fan- Oh, yeah, good point. Do not don't go, go there. To fix. No, don't go there. <laughs> but when you hit 100 on their, uh, I don't remember what it's called, so I'm going to call it a happiness meter, you actually unlock that trainer lodge unit as a new character that you get to play. And then they're basically kind of, you can use them now. Yeah. Is there a particular character that you were looking forward to unlocking once it got revealed? The ones that I want aren't in there yet, but... <laughs> Which ones are those? Grimsley and Melanie. (laughs) Oh, why those two? Grimsley has always been a favorite of mine. I don't know what it is. I think I just remember seeing him back in Gen 5, and I'm like, he's different, but I don't He's the Elite him. Four guy, right? Yeah, he is the Dark-type Elite Four member from Unova, and he's also a gambler. And I don't know. Something about him just stuck out in my mind, and I'm like, I think I do like this guy. And then when I started playing Pokemon Masters, they brought out Cygnus Suit Grimsley, and I'm kind of looking at him like, hey, yo, when did he get hot? (laughs) (laughs) When he get the swag. When he get the swag. And (laughs) I remember, um, (laughs) I remember messaging my best friend Galactic Elliot at like five in the morning (laughs) because I was getting ready for work. I'm like, hey, yo, look at Grimsley. And he goes, yo, he's hot. What the hell? (laughs) Grimsley got some game, man. Grimsley got a little drip, but (laughs) Mm -hmm. he's always just, I've always been drawn to characters that are like smug in a way, a little Mm -hmm. smart alecky. And Grimsley fits that to a T, especially in Masters. So I was like, yeah, yeah, he's my favorite. Melanie, I'm a curvy girl. She's a curvy girl. 
I see a lot of myself in Melanie outside of the mom factor. I mean, I am a cat mom, but <laughs> it's it's pretty much close enough. I mean, yeah. I love her personality, and I find her fun as a gym leader. But, yeah, they're not in the trainer lodge yet, which makes me sad. But you know what? They'll get there eventually. They did put Adamin in there. So I was like, you know what? I got Adamin. He's on my favorite list. We're okay with this. <laughs> <laughs> He's the uh, number two, I guess, to Grimsley. Yes. <laughs> I do have a list. But you have a list? I have a list. <laughs> Can you we be willing to share the list? Ironically enough, it's just full of Gen 5 boys outside of Adam. <laughs> Let's go. Like, Grimsley's, of course, number one. I think last year, Ingo and Emmett, the Subway Master Brothers, they wormed their way onto the list. They got a, they got a nice car yeah. or a nice subway <laughs> or train. Colress is on the list from Black 2 and White 2. And uh, Drayden is actually on the list. <laughs> Drayden with the big beard. <laughs> yep. He's also one that's not in Masters yet. And I'm like, okay, with all the Innova love they give Master, they give in Masters, where's Drayden? <laughs> They're just targeting you. It's like, no, we can't give Sweet Kicks this character yet. It's just too soon. We'll just we'll just satisfy Sweet Kicks with teasing more of Grimsley, because Grimsley now has like three units, and I'm happy. But <laughs> <laughs> You can have a full team of Grimsleys or people. Oh, I've done it. <laughs> As soon as they gave us the option to put the same character in the same party, because they didn't let us do that for a while. As soon as they gave us that perm, I'm like, hmm, I've got regular Grimsley, I've got Grimsley from Sun and Moon, and I've got Sadness who Grimsley. I'm happy. You got the whole collection. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> You've been listening to As the Pokeball Turns. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. When the game first came out, I remember I was going to buy it because I saw it on commercial on TV back then. And I'm like, yo, this looks kind of dope. I went to buy blue version, but they were sold out in my area. I was like, all right, let me go yellow because yellow looks okay. It's a little cute mouse on it. Now, I got teased on playing Pokemon, but my area was like limited to kids. So it wasn't much. So when I went in the buy blue version and it was sold out, I was like, wait, it's sold out? There's not many people, kids around here. Am I getting bullied by the same people that's playing this game in secrecy? I thought that was strange. But me and my old next door neighbor, who was my best friend, RIP, his birthday just passed a week ago, actually. But we used to just play. I would go to his house, come over and play. He would come to my house and go over and play and just spend all night playing Pokemon, talking about Pokemon and stuff. So it's very, very, very good memories. To hear the rest of this story, listen to Trainer's Eye number 50. Go Fest in New York City is incredible, featuring Squid the Beast. Now let's get back to the episode. So eventually Pokemon Go comes out. Mm -hmm. When did you first start playing that? At my last job at Staples. I played on the clock. <laughs> hey, there you go. Oops. But. <laughs> Sorry, Staples. Sorry, Staples. Pokemon over you. But <laughs> You're going out of business anyway. <laughs> shade button but anyway <laughs> <laughs> i started playing it when it came out i used to be really heavy into playing pogo and then life just got busier and neon text done some things that is kind of yikers now i pay i mainly only play during like go fest or community day as long as it's like a community day pokemon that i don't have already what about when you first started playing? So you were pretty much heavily playing this game a lot back in 2016? Yeah, I have a couple of local besties around here that are as big of nerds as I am. And we had a girls' day where we had our Pogo accounts and we went to the zoo. We, of course, enjoyed the zoo for what it's worth, but we still played Pogo while we did it. <laughs> That's cool. And did y'all do that often or was it just a once in a blue moon kind of thing? It was a once-time thing, unfortunately, but at the same time, I get it. We're adults. We're busy. My best friend, Ashley, was wanting to start a family, and she's like, hey, I want to really prioritize this first, so I'm going to probably put this down, so I'm sorry. And we're like, don't be sorry, girl. Go start a family. Family over Pokemon. These days, it's normally my other best friend, Katie, me and her, my boyfriend, Chase, her husband, Angelus, and our buddy, Tian. He doesn't play anymore. He just sits in the car with us and, you know, small talk. But he does that while myself and Katie and Chase all play Pogo together. Where do y'all go for, say, like a community day or for a ray day? 
There's a little area we like to go. There's a bunch of polka stops there, and we all just climb into Katie and Angelus's car. Angelus is the driver, and Katie will sit up in the passenger seat. Chase and Tien will sit in the back seat, and then there's like like a third back seat. Sometimes in the bigger cars, I'll sit back there all by my lonesome because I'm short and I'm the only one that fits back there. <laughs> <laughs> But we honestly, for the three hours, just drive up and down that street, and we have a route, and Pogo's had some good memories with that group. I don't know where this came from, but (laughs) all of a sudden one day, I think it was during, there was a thing with Castform and Lotad, I believe. Mm -hmm. That we were doing. Yeah, it was the research day. Yeah, Yeah, we were doing that. And we were talking about low tads. And for whatever reason, Angelus had a Mario song stuck in his head. All of a sudden, he just goes, low tad boobs, boobies of the low. And (laughs) we all kind of. What? (laughs) He's prone to do this. So we all kind of just stop. And we're like, what? (laughs) And that song now exists within our group. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all just sing it randomly sometimes whenever y'all meet up? Yep, sometimes we'll just sing it. And I think he's extended it to like the da 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 part <laughs> of the mm-hmm, song. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's of course, low tab boobies, low tab boobies, boobies on the low. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh it's gonna be a ringtone for people now hey y'all wanted to be a ringtone i'll record it <laughs> <laughs> i found your new unlock for twitch yippee <laughs> <laughs> well now be behoove not to ask you have you gotten your shiny joltik from pokemon go I actually did, but the thing is, Uh so I didn't get it myself because shiny hippopotas kept getting in the way during that day, and I was one salty little girl (laughs) because I didn't get my fuzz butt. But last year, during TwitchCon, I met up with a longtime friend and moderator of mine, Pexo Giant, and we've been sitting on a lucky trade with each other for years. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So we're plotting that, and I knew what I wanted to give Chris. Chris's favorite Pokemon is Dratini. He loves Dratini. And Dratini, for some reason, hated me in Pokemon Go. (laughs) I think one day they re-ran an event for it, and I finally was able to get some shiny Dratini. So I had one left over, but Chris, he plays all the time. I call my Pogo Professor. I was like, I, you already have everything, so you tell me what you want, and I will give it to you. And he goes, okay, well, if you have an extra shiny Dratini, I'll take that. And I'm like, okay, you can give me whatever you want. And he's thinking about it, and he clicks on his shiny Joltik to give to me. Mm. And that was his only one. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, Chris, that's yours. And he goes, yeah, but it's female, and it's shiny, and if anything, I would want you to have it, because you oh. are fuzzbutt. So we did the trade, and we were checking afterwards. The shiny Dratini that I sent to Chris ended up being a Shundo after the trade. Oh, my God. No way. (laughs) So (laughs) we were all freaking out for a minute, and Chris immediately made that his walking companion buddy. (laughs) I think for a while his status on Discord was, Lucky Trade got me a Shundo noodle. (laughs) (laughs) But I was so glad that I was able to give that to Chris. He has been there. I've been streaming for like almost eight years, <laughs> if you can believe it. And Chris has been there since the very beginning. And he's always just been so sweet and considerate. So the fact that I could do that for him just fills my heart with so much joy. What does it mean to have that kind of support for so long? It... <laughs> I always struggle to find the words for this because I can never fathom the support that I have. A lot of the fuzz butts have actually been there since day one, like Chris, Lantern Gundam, Munchlax, Solly, my boyfriend, of course. One of them, actually, just recently came back. Jordy had been gone for a long while, and Jordy popped their head in one day with a new username, and they're like, it's me, by the way, it's Jordy, and I'm like, oh my god! You're back from adulting! Hello! (laughs) (laughs) 
But to have that kind of support system, whether it's a fuzzbud that's been there since, as I call the crap top days, when I was streaming on my Mac laptop on a TV dinner tray. <laughs> We all start somewhere. With laggy alerts, could not ever get the Elgato program to put me in the Pokemon category. It always threw me in Pac-Man. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like it's almost like a great value version of Pikachu. <laughs> That's definitely what we could call it. But to have that support since day one onward, it means the world to me. I will never ask anybody to drop what they're doing and sit in my stream and support me so we can get those numbers and get that purple check mark and da da da. That's not who I am. I'm someone that completely understands that you have a life outside of this little box in between you and me. I will say, when you do get the chance to swing by, my end-all-be-all goal, outside, of course, just wanting to form a friendship with you, is to distract you from all of the negativity going on in your life, the random BS going on. If I can make you happy for that short time that you're in my stream, then I've done my job. And I think it shows whenever somebody watches your stream, because I've seen a couple of your streams, it's like seeing a little kid play Pokemon in a weird way. <laughs> Because you always have, you're always laughing, you're always smiling, you're always interacting with the community, and it really provides a very homey feel. And I think that it shows within the community and the people who observe your content, in my opinion. That's one of my main goals. We joke that I am chaotic wholesome. I want to be as wholesome as I can be, but I'm also a raging little hyperball of fuzz butt. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people will go, oh, well, wholesome also means that you're calm. Yeah, I'm calm for about two-fifths of the stream. <laughs> More like one-fifth. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, And the yeah. one-fifth is when you take a break? I mean, yeah. <laughs> or I take the break, and then sometimes Chase will just sit down, and he'll converse with the, with the fuzz butts. <laughs> he's done it a couple of times. If If he's got the energy for it, then he'll rob my seat while I'm like off going to the bathroom or refilling my advanced GG or grabbing another Dr. Pepper or putting eye drops in my eyes because contacts suck. He'll pop a squat and he'll shoot the breeze with the fuzz butts for a while before I Ooh, come back. Ooh, pop a squat. I don't want to smell that. <laughs> this is going down the toilet. Right <laughs> about to make a comment about Chase and I'm gonna withhold it. <laughs> I love you, honey. <laughs> Don't murder me. Okay, thanks. <laughs> if you need to hide the body, let me know. I know some places. Hey, no. Oh. <laughs> Not the two Texans coming up on the Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, he's Texan? Yeah. I had no idea. Yep, he is a Texas boy. <laughs> so I know you had a chance to attend NAIC in Ohio. Uh-huh. What was it like for you to attend that, and what did you do while you were there? I'm not going to lie to you. NAIC was a spur-of-the-moment thing where I wanted to go, and <laughs> Chase did not want to go. But, like, a lot of my friends were going, and a lot of them were friends that I've known for a long time but I never got to meet before, like Whimsy or Sunny and meeting new ones, like Hasty and Favlam and Pragmagics. Those people are now some of, like, my closest friends that I love so, so much. This is why I love Pokemon. It brings people together. <laughs> and the event itself was really fun, too. Now, granted, a lot of the time, when we weren't in the Pokemon Center pop-up shop, we were sitting there watching the VGC stuff. The TCG and Unite and Pogo was kind of going on around it, but I'm not going to lie to you, none of us knew what the heck was going on. <laughs> Yeah, I was just watching because it was there. Well, let me rephrase. Some of us knew what was going on with the VGC stuff. Like, my boyfriend Chase actually plays competitive. Back when A-Drive was doing this, he had, like, a competition league. Chase was Galactic Elliot's coach. And during NAIC, we actually got to meet Num Nexus, who Chase has admired for a very long time. And they were talking about those competitions, and Chase admitted to Nexus, well, when you were fighting Elliot, those were my setups. And Nexus was like, what, really? Holy crap, those stress me out, man! Those are amazing! <laughs> and now they're very close friends, which I find very awesome. 
But we had a whole lot of fun. We did some bar hopping too, which that part was a little hit and miss, but just getting to hang out together and enjoying Pokemon together as just a giant nerd family. I seriously could not have asked for a better time, which is why I'm wanting to go again this year. <laughs> well, Sweet Quicks, you've been a wonderful guest. I do have one last question before we close this taco stand. Okay. <laughs> So we're on a mountain somewhere, right? Oh, God. Or you're on a mountain somewhere, right? Uh Uh-huh. And the trainer's going up to you, ready to battle you with your strongest team or whatever team you want. Oh, heck. What six Pokemon would you bring? Oh, (laughs) hecky. I think the team will probably actually have to be the one that I've got going on right now in Scarlet and Violet, which is my my Galvantula, of course, because big fuzz butt, Golurk, Lapras, Whimsicott, Alolan Muck. Who is the last one that I'm blanking on? Oh, no. <laughs> I hate meltbrain moments, dude. <laughs> I get that sometimes. Why can't I remember it? What the hell? So, Joltek. Well, Joltek, duh. Galvantula. <laughs> Joltek's big brother. Joltek's big brother. Golurk, Lapras, Whimsicott. Oh, Metagross. What the heck? Oh, I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> Metagross is the last one. Oops. Yep, Metagross <laughs> is the last one. I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry to the Charizard and Lucario fanboys that are also technically the fanboys that go to the Metagross. I'm sorry. I love Metagross. I just forgot because I'm dumb. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Charizard gets enough love as it is. <laughs> Sweet Kicks, thank you for coming on the show. Before you do go, if people want to check out your content, they want to connect with you, where can they go, Bomb Means? Please plug away. Of course. You guys can find me on Twitch and TikTok and YouTube as SweetCakes101 for the streams. I try to aim for a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday schedule, but with how things are going this year, it might get changed up a little bit. But Tuesdays, for sure, I can always promise you I will be there. <laughs> cool beans and i'll make sure to include links to everything she said in the description of today's episode thank you for listening to as the pokeball turns if you want to support the show consider becoming a patreon by either clicking the link in the description or going to patreon.com slash as the pokeball turns now if you aren't able to support the show financially you can always support the show by sharing it with your pokemon community because this show wouldn't exist without listeners like you now here's a sneak peek for the next episode of as the pokeball turns well, yeah. So obviously we stream on Twitch now. Yeah. But funny enough, the way we met was on another live streaming app. <laughs> yep. So, uh, what year was it? Like twenty. Well, we met on the broadcasting app in twenty sixteen, but we met in person for the first time in twenty seventeen. Yeah, it was an app called Live Me. I think it's still around. It's around. It's just not. It was the you same. just streamed from your phone and yeah. You know, it, was kind of, it was kind of an interesting app. <laughs>